So, so first, I want you know. Yesterday, uh, Andrew talked about the you know, students, uh, how hard you know call him like at eleven thirty, keep your phone open at eleven thirty. So I also want to share some experience uh, with uh, that. So I basically saying how confusing can it be as a student student. Uh, so, so I will give you an example is that, uh, uh, so uh, as uh, Shara mentioned, this 40 quantum hall, which you might name in that paper, uh, is considered to be how, why Xu Chen stopped uh, this topological, you know, uh, integrator, this direction. And uh, actually, I can share with you how confused I was at that time, you know, when, when we have this paper. So this is the title of the paper, Population in Science, a four-dimensional generalization of the quantum hole effect. Uh, so this is the first version I got from Xu Chen. Uh, the title is called uh, Quantum Mechanical Origin of the Relativity Principles. <laughs> so, uh, so this happens, you know, when I finish, you know, some derivation, I sent to him like, you know, uh, last night. Then like this morning, I got this paper. Uh, he sent it to me. I was completely blow my mind. What? <laughs> this has nothing to do with with my calculations. What? What is he trying to write here? Okay. So I really as confused as. Uh, you know, also I involved this work, but you know, I was completely confused, okay? So that's before the, uh, uh, the paper, uh, first version of the paper. And uh, uh, <coughs> so this is how I confused about this. And uh, one week after the paper got accepted, and uh, we discuss uh, this paper again, so which is a future direction. At that day, I really, you know, I, I looking back, you know, actually really uh, uh, shocked to me. So it's the so first sentence uh, he told me is that uh, this equation we write down is really the spin current. Okay, so the major difference between the 4D quantum hole and the 2D quantum hole is that the 4D quantum hole is a time reversal invariant. So 2D quantum hole, we have magnetic field. Uh, to, uh, it's not time reversal invariant. So that's actually the first. Uh, he, he, you know, he explained to me is basically the, the first sentence. The second sentence is actually also uh, blew my mind. It's basically saying, you know, this model, if you want to really to realize it, is actually just go to spin over a couple of systems. The so essence of this model is really you have to go to spin orbital coupling you know, to do this. Uh, and then uh, the, the third uh, sentence he explained me is really the one I even, you know, today I look back is, is really uh, what I feel, you know, is how, how great insight it can have. So he says spin orbital coupling systems have not been well started in kinetic matter physics at that time. Okay, so that's the direction what he wanted to go. But at that time, I actually don't understand at all what is this, this, this really great advice about this. So this I want to share. Uh, in fact, you know, he already has, at that time, he already tell me if we want to quantize uh, this, uh, this, uh, con you know, this uh, thing, and it's exactly the spin one is going this direction, this. Spin up is going that way. This is a spin quantum spin hole. So he already have all these pictures, but we did try to write down uh, in a you know, two-dimensional version of this kind of model. So that's uh, uh, that's uh, I want to share here to, to you about this uh, this thing. You know, I I, I, I explained at that time. So. So yeah, you know, so now I look back at that time, I, I didn't have any sense about what he, he's talking about. So, uh, so uh, another work, of course, uh, Subir just mentioned is that uh, 
uh, this beautiful work about the SO5 theory of high temperature superconductor. And uh, I was also very fortunate, you know, <coughs> I joined this group, it very good starting in the 98. So just this paper published, uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, so I was able to work in one here. So certainly, uh, Xu Chen's stand, uh, so I think he, he has some, you know, yesterday, last night we were talking about what is his research stand. So of course, you want to pick an important problem. You know, this is important, certainly this is uh, IDC is an important problem. And he won't generalize everything. So this is, uh, you know, so uni unification, you want uh, the essence uh, in, this in this. And he also want a beautiful math to do these things, okay? Uh, best ways, of course, beautiful equations. But in this case, I think I will call it beautiful math. Yeah, so five group is very, very special if you look back and you know, all this in the group of theory. So uh, this, this, this uh, uh, but of course, high TC is uh, very controversial. This certainly is not the, uh, 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 the final you know, theory for high TC, but it's certainly some piece we, we enjoy it about its beauty. And so uh, today I'm going to talk to you about some recent uh, what I'm working on, uh, some new directions. So also related to high temperature superconductor. But I think I will think uh, in a different uh, point of view. Uh, uh, so, so I think the, to memorize Xu Chen is best way is like thinking different. <laughs> Uh, go to different direction in explore. So that's also I, 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 I had a uh, good time last uh, uh, March meeting. I talked to him about this. Uh, this I thought. Uh, so I think you know high TC problem is that you know uh, Subia just give a interesting model, but I think the the problem is really high TC problem. We do not have beautiful equations, beautiful you know things really to write down. And uh, another problem is really we, we didn't provide a very too much theoretical help of all clue to, you know, to search for new high temperature superconductors. So that's uh, one way there's a big gap between you know, the theorist and the, you know, the, uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know, try, people trying to find high temperature superconductors. So I'm really thinking about a kind of different philosophy in the last uh, uh, couple of years is that, you know, I, so this philosophy is actually, I think it's shared by uh, Leckett as a recent paper. Uh, he, he, his, uh, his, uh, his talk and uh, published it in the uh, science bulletin in, in China. Uh, so he, he basically divided by the problem of a physics problem to three categories. One category, there's no Hamiltonian you can write down, so like biosystem typically. And then a system which we know the Hamiltonians like code atom, BCS, which, which has well-defined Hamiltonians. And then this high TC problem, he say, is only half known Hamiltonians, okay? So we do not know really the whole Hamiltonian, but we only probably half known. So for these half known uh, Hamiltonians systems, actually the best way is uh, to uh, on a simple uh, uh, qualitative argument you know, to review the underlying physics. So that's a uh, uh, way to uh, 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 philosophy I was taking in this direction. So why I take it this direction, actually is that uh, I was uh, very lucky that uh, when the iron based conductor was discovered, I was able to immediately you know, uh, jump into this uh, field and work on this field. But after working, like eight years or seven years, I came back to ask uh, one fundamental question. So if you look at the uh, database, if you look at the iron based conductor material, this material has been there in 1970s and then 1980, okay? And uh, actually, not just iron, but all the iron can be fully replaced by chromium, manganese, cobalt, nickel, copper. All these materials uh, exist as actually in the database, okay? So now suppose we, we go back to 15 years ago, 
suppose we know you know this material you know uh, uh, people ask you one question ask you know suppose you take this five material ask which one will be high dc okay so that's the question suppose we at that time there's no experiment with that but uh, uh, theoretically can ask this question so then you know, people may we can cook a model like you know you put all this like U U prime J H, and then put a band structure a calculator. You, you you try to predict which one will be high DC. I basically you know say that you will come out completely disaster answers. So no one, well, not no one, but you know we'll just pick an outlet kind of chance to predict <laughs> iron is high temperature superconductors. In fact, that is, you know, the completely changed my mind. You know, that so far at the moment we just have a big gap between the real material and the models we try to try to do. In fact, if you using this kind of thing to calculate uh, using some standard method that we we learned from uh, so state physics, many body physics, actually the chromium will be the highest. You know, uh, high temperature superconductors, but uh, certainly uh, there's no, you know, you dope the system, you kill the magnetism for chromium, there's nothing come out uh, at the moment. So, that's, uh, <coughs> so I think it's, so that's changed my philosophy to do actually the high TC problem. So I think, you know, if we want to have a high TC problem, actually, we really not just physics part. But we have to understand the material part, also the chemistry part. I think some people probably like it. So, so I, I want to get a, a qualitative picture to understand how high TC is developed as a combination of all, all these aspects. So that's the uh, key I want to ask uh, the philosophy I want to take. So that is the key question. If you really look at the uh, 3D periodic table, 3D transition metals, so we have two examples, so iron-based uh, superconductor and a cup cuprates, and these two become high temperature superconductor. But if you look at all other transition um, uh, element compounds, none of them uh, we find it to be in last, like at least last 30 years, we're searching so many materials, but they are not high temperature superconductors at all. So why is this iron, Kappa is so special. Why not others are not high temperature superconductor candidates even? Or whether they are candidate or not, I mean, for certain we didn't find uh, another example. So this is a key question I want to address here. So that's why I want to go to a simple physics. So here we know that for cuprates, of course, actually, I believe, you know, Hubble model, TGL model is relevant to high DC in, in many respect. <coughs> So if you look, the, the physics of the cuprates really came from the copper oxygen layer, and the copper oxygen layer is formed by this oak teacher with the corner shear. So you have a copper oxygen, and they form this uh, <laughs> two-dimensional layer by sharing the corner. So in that case, uh, plus you know, the lattice form, and we know that the d orbitals form T2G and EG, but you know, when you have this yang Taylor effect, and the, the, uh, uh, the, the one of the orbital in EG, uh, t, dx squared minus y squared, and uh, push to high energy. And uh, if you want to use this orbital, you have to put a nine electron to, in the copper to make the dx squared minus y squared as a dominant player in the system. And uh, why is this orbital? And this orbital is because it's actually the orbital which is really coupled to the in-plane oxygen. Okay, so you have the super exchange interactions. So the key here is really the dx square minus y square orbital, which are responsible for mediating these large uh, super exchange interactions, are isolate near Fermi energy. Okay, that's the particular that is structure allow you to do it, and there's a chemistry, and there's a symmetry, and also the nine electron feeling, and uh, you, you you can do this. Okay, so that's a uh, of course, we know that this is a starting point for our theory, a lot of you know, uh, theory in the high temperature superconductors. But then if you look at the RMB superconductors, the actually at the beginning, everybody, you know, including myself, you know, we 
the band structure is too complicated. You need like five d orbital to write down these models, and uh, and so it looks like you know it completely uh, it blew my mind. But if you look deeply in the Allenby superconductor, later actually I I, I find that is approximately the Allenby superconductor if you look locally d orbitals. So actually has a very interesting feature. So this interesting feature is that because uh, this is a uh, the building blocks is a tetrahedra, so actually the T2G orbital becomes responsible because it is a T2G orbital coupled to the surrounding arsenic or selenium. They are the high energy. But in fact, if you look at the uh, local energy environment, it actually is, is a two T2G orbital selected near the Fermi energy. And uh, the reason is one of the T2G orbitals actually is coupled to the EG orbital pushed to the high energy. And you leave with two T2G orbital pure stay at a Fermi energy, okay? And uh, this is uh, actually the con configuration where it happened. It's slightly different from group rates, but uh, this DXY2 orbital is really the orbital make a strong in-plane coupled into the to the arsenic and the selenium, and they, when you have six electron on the shell, actually they can be isolated near the Fermi energy. So that's the uh, key feature which actually is the same as the uh, cuprates. So, so in summarize, I think both of these two systems actually has this uh, interesting feature with those d orbital with the strong in plane dp couplings is actually isolate near Fermi energy. And our other orbitals as they push away, and, uh, and this, we know this kind of orbital is, uh, can be immediate and the field make a super exchange <laughs> interaction. And uh, so then, you know, of course, so this sounds very simple and uh, you know, also reasonable, but then actually I find this, just this simple statement actually explains why Cooper's RM based superconductor are so special. It, 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 first, of course, it explains why copper iron is irreplaceable in this environment to create high temperature superconductor. If we try to replace this their own environment, then the, 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 it, it will be different. <laughs> so that explains the unique. Then you try to find a system, a material which satisfies these conditions, okay? And then you go to database, try to find as actually I am able to find so far in the last couple of years. If you search entire data, not search entire data as I can do, you know, this is, I was limited certainly. So actually it explains why the, uh, it's so rare to have, you know, to find such kind of material uh, in, in this case. So let me, uh, uh, Tell you so. If you look at the periodic table, so if I, I just focus on three D uh, transition metal elements, and then we have, have example this iron, which has uh, the, the layer structure is constructed by edge shear the tetrahedron, and in that case you have the D six electron feeding to allow satisfy this uh, this condition, and then we have another example which you have using the work teacher to build a two dimensional layer corner shear. And in that case, D9 uh, electrons satisfy these conditions. Of course, you want to ask if you want to set this condition, if you want to look at this site, uh, uh, transition metal compounds, uh, what will happen? Actually, certainly this site is uh, difficult. Because I, I, I basically think there's a very little chance to find another high temperature superconductor on this site. So the reason is very simple, because if you have the highest D, you know, if you have strong DP couplings, so D orbital energy actually is increases. So, so if you want to reach this kind of high energy D orbital, you have to put more electrons in the D shear. Okay, so this side is really kind of hopeless if we want to do, uh, find another one. So that's, so the left is really these two environments, the cobalt and nickel, we have D7, D8 uh, feeding configuration where we can find and as a compound which has this, uh, this case, okay? 
So, so I, I searched a lot of cobalt nickel compound in the last uh, two or three years. So yeah, I'll, I'll finish quickly. So let me uh, tell you that uh, I, I'm able to find a real real material, but I'm closing to find one, I feel, okay? So let me explain to you that a few examples I, I, I do. So one is I using different unit block to construct lattice. So in this case, I use the, the triangle by middle structure to con construct the triangle la uh, layer. And in that case, you can prove that we have D7 electron feedings, there's a one orbital actually by symmetry is uh, uh, separated from other material, or from other orbitals, and uh, it's, you, you, when you have seven electrons, it can, can just uh, isolate near Fermi energy. Okay, that's one example, and this type of structure is actually very hard to find in nature, uh, real material, so there's only, manganese has this type, and for cobalt, nickel, actually, I haven't been able to do this, so that's a, uh, one problem, of course, but it's, it's a theoretical construction uh, you can do. The second one is actually, uh, I still use work teacher, but I tilt the work teacher by 90 degree. Okay, so that then I try to make both EG orbital do the same physics in the plane. Okay, that's, that's so I have the, the eight feeling I will create this environment. So in fact, there's such lattice structure uh, in the, in the in database, okay, so this is one uh, I uh, called uh, uh, nickel selenium to oxygen. So involve two uh, anions <laughs> in this case, and uh, this, in this case, actually, both EG orbital will participate in join, uh, super exchange coupling uh, like this. And uh, this material, very interestingly, is actually we have uh, uh, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, all have, okay. But once you want to go to nickel, stop there. So far, I haven't been able to synthesize for the nickel, okay? So that's uh, unfortunate, but you know, it's, we are getting close. Maybe it's uh, still possible. And the, so I was, since time's limited, I, I, you know, I will just uh, skip this part. And uh, so this part, is I try to explain why the, the configuration I mentioned uh, in the iron based conductor is right. So this is, this is com configuration, but it is not uh, so important here. So I will just uh, uh, tell you, uh, using this figure to tell you. So uh, the iron based conductor, the reason why you have the two EG or two T2G orbital is because the two iron nearest neighbor couple very strongly uh, between the EG and the T2G. So and uh, you push the one uh, T2G orbital up. So then you live with this. But suppose if I have no this B side, I've just take A side. So then I have no coupling between the EG and the T2G, I will get a three T2G orbital to do the physics. So here, this structure is really the corner shared tetrahedron. So in that case, I, 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 I'll be able to do this and I can theoretically cook up material. And this is zinc blend structure actually. Uh, and I, I replace one layer by just pure cobalt and I can calculate everything. Uh, this is Fermi surface uh, for three T2G orbitals. It's very similar to the lucinate in sensing, but it's strong interaction version of the uh, lucinate. So you can calculate all this, and this will be the actual, the very strong D wave. Uh, <coughs> but then actually, I was thinking about how to cook this corner shared uh, uh, tetrahedral material in the actual, uh, I, I think uh, uh, this is one I got this idea from this, this uh, uh, solar cell, uh, semiconductors. If you actually use a zinc blend structure, you can replace, replace, you know, introduce more cations, and uh, you can you can get different uh, structures. So I yeah. So I just finished. So so actually, I'd be able to you know think about you know one particular structure that I call the uh, uh, this is a copper indium cobalt to selenium whatever this. And this is actually has a layer of the cobalt uh, corner shear, the tetrahedral. And uh, I Google it, uh, then actually I find one chemist, uh, actually at least uh, uh, says he's, he synthesized two years ago, but uh, then I ask uh, people in ROP to synthesize, so far they haven't been able to success <laughs> repeated this. So the, anyway, so that's also the work going on. Uh, so let me uh, conclude here, so actually we have uh, these four elements, and uh, I think we have two uh, uh, electron environment, 
to support high DC, but there's a possible uh, another environment for the cobalt nickel. Uh, just we need to search uh, more on this case. And I think this corner shared tetrahedra is very likely. I'm uh, still working on that. And uh, this will be uh, really link to this RN and to copper. And the uh, uh, many physics will be, we can discuss similar physics. So, so with that, I, I, I uh, uh, so yesterday I say, you know, Xuchen is really, uh, we, we Xuchen, uh, I think everybody can find a better part of ourselves. Thank you. Uh, questions? Lens and loosen it. Yeah, lens and <coughs> Lo loosen it. You mean? Oh, nickel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nickel is a, uh, yeah. The people very try very hard for the nickel. So you try to emulate the environment of the copper, right? The cuprates. So the nickel in that case is one plus. So the 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 the, the variance is like actually try to go to one plus. Okay, so in that case, I think there's a lot of other instability can happen, like orbital, or chart. You know, so that's a problem. So I think that that's a key problem which we need. So here, I really want, you know, hope is do like real two two plus. So I not have this, but uh, that, that's really chemistry. I, 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 you know, there's a lot of uh, chemistry reason on this issue. So that's. Yeah, um, I'm here. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so uh, you you have mainly focused now on the electronic structure, or basically at the at on the atomic uh, electronic structure, right? But uh, in terms of mechanism, is that always the same, or are there uh, additional yeah. aspects that uh, come so in? So if you, you if you believe this, that the mechanism certainly is, is under fair magnetic fluctuation, but the 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 key case I will try to address here is that. Uh, it's when the electron introduced to the to the system, the electron has to go these orbitals, which has involving this joint antiferromagnetic fluctuation due to the super chain. That, that's 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 the environment I want to create. So ma many material, even they are antiferromagnetic, but you dope the system, actually the electron not go there, and there's a, a lot of complicated other orbital showing up on the Fermi uh, surface of these things. That that. That's the problem. Like this iron based conductor, if you change it to chromium, chromium is actually a bigger, you know, is a better antiferromagnetic in that case. But uh, they are, this antiferromagnetic is not for super exchange interaction. That's the, the main reason. Yeah. So. Uh, other questions? Uh, Especially now that we have this topological database, we have exactly that information that you need at close to the Fermi level. Right, so you can just take one of these topological databases and scan through 200,000 or whatever it is and yeah. find find the right structure and the right orbitals of the Fermi yeah. level. So, I, so I, I completely agree, of course. This is certainly, I, you know, we do actually, I have a student, uh, they, they try to do that. but. Uh, to me, is like I can look at the structure uh, material uh, because this case is very rare. So I don't want, well, you know, I don't need to actually really look in the real database. So, so you have to combine the symmetry and the local building block and the defeating shell. Actually, it's 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 really a lot of constraint. So I can just uh, so so far we are unable to find the one in database. That's that's. Put it this way, so all, all these things I actually came from like analytic thinking, how to you know, uh, constrain, then we, myself was doing that. So I, I go back to check whether the database has these types. But, uh, unfortunately, so far we haven't succeeded. Yeah. Uh, last question. 
So I have a question. So there's another thorium chromium silicide type superconductors. Is that this lutetium nickel boro carbide superconductors, for example, where people don't think magnetism plays such a role? But would it fit into your picture? No. So, so here, it's, it's so nearly uh, the same. No? no. Here, I'm really trying to go to the high temperature, unconventional high temperature superconductors. For the low, low TC superconductor, of course, certainly there's some unconventional part. But it's, but it's, it's going to be very hard to debate, you know, where really it involves this mechanism or not. Uh, so I really want to find the one has similar uh, transition temperature as at least uh, as iron-based superconductor. Yeah, but but uh, the lutetium nickel boron carbide have at least Lut 23 Lut Kelvin. This is a nickel with a boron carbide, oh, so yeah. it's very related yeah, yeah, to yeah, the yeah, iron yeah, yeah. connector. But it's like 20, 20 something, right? Is that the case? 20, 23, 26, 23 and 26, yeah. What says? Yeah, 20, 20. <coughs> so, yeah. Th that's not exceeding 40 Kelvin. So that's not, not, not I want to argue about this. Yeah, okay. Uh, we are a little bit over schedule already. So let's thank the speaker again.